Alright, what's up everybody? PJ Trailer Project. Basically, we're going to put some D-rings. We have a no tie-down area right here between the two fenders. Uh, basically, I had a heavy safe on there not too long back, and I had to kind of put it over the axles, and I had nowhere to tie down with. You can get these tie-downs, put on the D-rings right from the factory, but we didn't, so we went out and purchased some from U.S. Cargo Control. We decided to go with the weld-on type. You can do ones that just screw into the boards there or whatnot, but... Uh, I just believe in the welding ones. They hold 12,000 pounds and they do a pretty good job. Here they are. They're just these uh, half-inch rings here. And basically you just weld that piece on. It says made in China on them. Makes me a little bit nervous. But uh, I think we'll be okay. We're going to use the Miller Matic 211 Auto Set. Basically one of the best welders that I've ever used. It's easy to use. All you got to do is dial in the thickness of the metal. And it's going to take over the rest of the guesswork for you. But we do need 220, and with that, we're going to use this welder generator adapter cord from Hobart to take the 220 from our DeWalt DXGN 14,000 watt generator and pump it right into the 211 auto set with MVP. It does dual voltage voltages, but now we're going to be on the 220, so I don't have that in house, so the generator is going to take care of that. Two volts is going to take care of the fender. Real easy, we use the Milwaukee M12 ratchet for that. That thing's great. You can just crank on the hard lugs. Not lugs, but bolts. And just rip them right out easily. We're going to use the uh, Metabo 40 amp hour grinder with the uh, Diablo flap, the 60 grit, 4.5 inch. Kind of uh, wish that thing was toolless though. Like the uh, other one we have. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to lay out these D-rings right in the fenders where we need them. Make sure everything's looking good there before we do any grinding. And another thing before we do any grinding, we're going to want to go ahead and grind out an area for our ground for the welder. So I just grinded an area right there. It kind of sucks grinding up all this powder coat because it really is strong, good, protective stuff. And we're not going to be able to replace the powder coat. We're just going to replace it with the glossy Rust-Oleum paint. Um, but you want to do a good job here so you get good contact when you're welding. I recommend taking out that inside board because uh, we ended up doing it on the other side. And it's just one of those things where you want to take your time do the job right or you just want to rush through it. Here I was just trying to rush through it and obviously, uh, you know, trying to be innovative and fast. But this side suffered compared to the other side. I still think I got some good welds going. I'm just going to line it all back up right there, right on the... Uh, places that we grind it out make sure we're looking good and here is my great idea we're going to put that piece of steel between there steel sheeting to hopefully protect the wood from getting burned when we're welding <clears throat> I mean they say welding is like hotter than the sun so being next to wood is probably not a good idea next thing we use this uh, magnet that we got from Harbor Freight Tools kind of to hold up the D-ring some people can go ahead and tack it in I just went ahead and did that she's ready for welding and here's another area where I kind of wish I would grind down a little more. 211 auto set in action. Real nice welder. As you can see, it's popping a real nice weld there. I mean, I can't stress, especially if you're an entry level welder, how great this machine is and how versatile this machine is. It's just, I'm doing great jobs. And I used to use just one. Uh, I think it was an old old Lincoln Electric and nothing against the brand, but it was just, you know, you had to figure out your wire speed and all that. It took a while. But there's my wall. As you can see, we got looks like we got some good penetration at the top there. We got that heat line. Uh, on the bottom, I kind of wish I would have grinded up really close to that powder coat line, but I still think we're good. Just did a double check there. I mean, that doesn't mean anything. Obviously, I'm putting like two pounds of pressure on it. We'll see when I got a car on there and it comes flying off. I did a good job or not. So I went ahead and finished this up. Towards the back of the trailer, I wasn't able to use that steel plate because there was, uh, it was too close. So I burnt the wood just a little bit. But the 211 all set is just a great, great machine. Can't say enough about it. And that DeWalt generator, we're going to have a review coming up real soon on that too. We're going to have that expansion video. So I'm going to show you some pictures here and on the other side you're going to see where I actually removed the plank. It was great. I could actually access it a lot better, get better weld. Boom, there they are, painted. A little bit of rust oleum. Not as good as the powder coat, but you know what, you guys, trailers are going to rust. 
So, but great stuff. Go ahead and check out PJ Trailers. Don't forget to check out Night Equipment and check out ToolsInAction.com.